to avoid them. And when they came around, you immediately knew it was what? It's time to go. Yeah, they, they, they were considered by you as a social outcast. And, and you have intentionally isolated this individual or group of individuals from your life. Am I right about it? This is what the world did to those who contracted leprosy. However, it was 10 times worse than what we do today. Uh, in, in, in antiquity, people with leprosy were considered untouchable. I, I mean, you couldn't put your hands on them physically and they could not feel the touch of, a, of an individual that was clean. If you had leprosy, you were considered the walking dead. Can I get a witness? Can I put some meat on the plate then? I know y'all say it's early for the meat, but I know the grill is hot. So I'm going to put some meat on here early. In our text, if you walk with me over to the text, Jesus gives us a wonderful example of how to treat those that we consider untouchable. How to treat those who have been ostracized in our community. He also reminds us that in someone's mind, you represent the untouchable and the ostracized. There's somebody in this world that don't want to be around you. I know you lovable and I know you think you friends with everybody, but there's somebody that don't just like you just because of you. Ain't got nothing to do with what you did, how you living. They just don't like the way you look. Come on, somebody talk back to me. And otherwise, all they're saying to you is that they feel you have leprosy to them. They don't want to be around you or they don't even want to touch you. I'm going to tell the truth in what? Yeah, in the text, the leprosy is an infectious disease. It attacks the skin and the peripheral nerves. Uh, it can cause the loss of a limb, usually through injury to the limb that goes unnoticed. Now, that blew my mind, Reverend Vance. Because I didn't really understand that leprosy draws throughout the disease. It begins to, to mess with your sense of touch. So that when you would bruise yourself, you wouldn't even notice that you bruised it. And then the bruise becomes infected and then you start to lose limbs. Leprosy was a, mm, I'll give me a say something right there. <laughs> But let me hasten on. But as bad as the physical effects of leprosy are, the social effects were worse. When a person came down with leprosy, they are banished from the city, made to live outside the city gates and with all the other lepers. Can you imagine if you got sick with HIV or COVID and they put everybody outside of Baltimore City? And they didn't want to touch you. They didn't want to conversate with you. And even if you made your way back into the city, you had to dress and cover your entire body. And every time somebody came near you, you had to yell the words what? Unclean. If they came into the city, they were forced to cover themselves from head to foot. They were quarantined from the rest of the population. They were stigmatized as outcasts and families because of leprosy were torn apart and lives broken with despair. They were not allowed to worship in the temple. They couldn't even call on God because they wouldn't even let them in the temple to pray for deliverance. That's how bad leprosy were. They were not allowed to worship in the synagogue and, as the, and even as the church was developed in the early days, they couldn't even come into the church. Leprosy was viewed as being a representative of sin. Now y'all got to stay with me now to hear what I'm saying. Representative of sin. So if you were a leper, it was assumed that you were in sin. Come on, somebody. Help me walk through this thing. Don't let me walk alone. <laughs> but, but what does a 21st century leper look like? Mm-mm. Minister Harris, I better, 
get out the way of these stones they're getting ready to throw. The, they, they are the social outcasts of the world. You have quarantined them from your world. I purposely chose those words, your world, rather than the world. Just because you don't want them around doesn't mean that others feel the same way. Can I get a witness? You see, if you have social outcasts, uh, uh, then it's profitable to believe that, that you might be a social outcast in somebody else's circle. Am I right about it? In other words, you have leprosy for <laughs> in somebody else's circle. They look at you as the leper. Uh, they don't want you around. They don't want you in their home. They don't want you on the job. They want you to disappear. And I want you to see from this text how Jesus reacts to the outcast, to those who have been ostracized, to, to those of us who, who folk don't like simply because of who we are. I want you to see how Jesus reacts to the, to the lepers and consider uh, what Jesus did to this person that he met with lepers. First, look at what he does. Something has to happen, Sister Zelda, before Jesus can move. The first thing the leper did, if we read the text, is he sought Jesus. Whatever you need, seek Jesus. Tell your neighbor, whatever you need, seek Jesus. Tell, 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 them, tell the neighbor on the other side, whatever you need, seek Jesus. And too often we seek in a whole lot of folk and a whole lot of people that can't help us when Jesus said, I'm sitting here waiting for you, for you to call. We don't seek Jesus. Look at what the Bible says when we read this morning, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper. It wasn't that Jesus was looking for him. He went looking for Jesus. He was seeking Jesus. This untouchable, unclean was bold in approaching Jesus. This leper dramatically demonstrates to us that no person is too unclean. No person is too polluted. No person is too dirty. No person can have too many problems that they ought not seek. Gee, somebody know what I'm talking about. I don't care what you've done or what you've been through. If you got a problem, you ought to seek Jesus. Some of us came from the bottom to the top. We've been through some mess and we had some mess in us. But we had sense enough to seek Jesus. Tell your neighbor, seek Jesus. You see, if you're here today and I don't care what you've done, uh, where you've been, uh, and, and I don't care how many people put you on their untouchable list, don't seek them, seek Jesus. I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy that in the alley. You go, don't worry about them, you seek Jesus. The Bible says, but seek ye first what the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all those things, what is going to be added unto you. Truth be told, Deep, I was a wretch undone. <laughs> we all have to seek Jesus. So we, we all had sinful leprosy. Am I right about it? <laughs> And, and God could not look upon us. Ah, uh, but 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 a blood. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. Watch this. Watch this. This person with leprosy sees Jesus despite what people think. Too often, I'm not going up there because they gonna talk about me. I'm not gonna seek Jesus because my family don't follow Jesus. Oh, help me preach this thing, Lord. I'm not going to seek Jesus because I have to tell him when I get back to the job what I've done. Uh, I, I'm not going to seek him. This, but this person with leprosy seeks Jesus despite what people thought. He, he was utterly unclean. He, he knew what the law stated that, that you weren't not supposed to touch the unclean. You were not supposed to come into contact with the unclean. And if you read the text, the Bible does not say that, the, that this leper even cried out unclean, unclean. 
Because that's what the requirement was when you came into contact with somebody that was not a leper, you were supposed to cry out, unclean. The Bible said he just showed up and saw Jesus. So you got to stop worrying about the stigma of, of seeking Jesus and just make your way to the Lord. Somebody shout glory in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause see, this, this leper understood for all have sinned and come short of what? The glory of God. He came to Jesus despite being an outcast, despite being ostracized by the people. And is there anybody here that you can remember when you first came to church? You felt a little uncomfortable and you didn't feel like this was home for you. But, but you didn't feel comfortable around God's people because you weren't a part of God's people. But yet you stayed and you still sought Jesus. And once you sought Jesus and you got in and you came to him. Him, I began you began to see him work but when he gets to Jesus two things happen real quick and I'm gonna move to my second point first thing he does is worship read the text I'm preaching the word y'all this morning read the text he the Bible says that he worshiped in other words he bows down to someone who's greater than he is Beloved, you might feel like an outcast in the world, but if you seek Jesus, you ought to fall down and worship him. You ain't got to worry about who's looking at you, what they say. You need, if you want a blessing and you need God to step in, then you need to seek him and allow God to move in your life and not worry about what the people around you are going to say and what they're going to do. Stop asking for man's permission to seek your God. For God God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if I'm going to move in my truth, I ain't going to worry about what your truth is. I need Jesus so I'm going to seek him while he yet may be found. Preach holder. Look at it. So he worshiped. He worshiped when he got to Jesus. And then watch this. After he worshiped, he made his request known to God. Here it is now. He comes in. He, he comes in. First, he seeks Jesus. And he ain't supposed to be seeking Jesus according to the world's terms. But he seeks him anyway. He gets to Jesus and he bows down and worships. And then he said, but Jesus, I got a problem. In other words, he got a prayer that need to be answered. In other words, he got some stuff. I need a healing. But watch this. He don't ask for healing he asked to be cleansed y'all missed that many of us run in and ask for healing and this leper ran in and said lord i need you to clean me up why is the cleansing important instead of the healing because the, the cleansing takes the healing a step further see the healing will only heal you physically and you still a wretch undone but when god cleanses you a spiritual transformation takes place and you not only become healed physically but you become saved spiritually good God almighty I feel like preaching it, 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 it was none other than what David was saying in Psalm 51 he said have mercy upon me O God according to thy loving kindness according to thy tender mercies he said uh, he said uh, blot out my transgressions wash me from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin look at what David's saying now this is after David done committed murder so I don't care what you've done if you ain't committed murder you you can do you can ask this same prayer just like David David had messed up he had killed a man he had had a he had caused adultery David was messed up y'all but David has sense enough to seek the Lord for redemption. He says in verse 7 of the 51st Psalm, Purge me with hyssop that I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. So I leave you with this on this point. As you seek Jesus daily, let your circums don't let your circumstances, your condition keep you from seeking the Savior. I don't care what list people have you on if they have you on the untouchable list or if they ostracized you don't seek their favor seek god's favor somebody shout glory in this place
okay, I got to move on. I got to move on. Secondly, secondly, once you do that, Jesus will comfort you. He'll comfort you. Watch this. Watch this. Look at, look, we, we read in the text. Jesus took a risk that many men don't take. He reached out and touched the untouchable. Before saying a word, if you read the text, uh, Jesus reached out for the man. He put forth his hand, the Bible says, and touched him. This was, watch this now. I know some folk going to get mad with me because some theologians view this one way. Some theologians view it the other way. But this is how I view it. His touch was not a touch of healing, but a touch of comfort. See, y'all missed it. Y'all, y'all missed it. See, many people think that because Jesus touched him, that Jesus immediately healed him. I'll get to the healing in a minute, but, but this touch was a touch for somebody that had not been touched in possibly years. This touch was a touch saying, you all right with me. I don't care what they think. I, you all right with me. That touch said that I'm the Messiah and I can handle anything that you might got. He touched him to comfort him and say, we all right. You ever had somebody put their arm around you and it just made you feel a little bit better? You was going through hell and high water and somebody came along and just said, baby, it's going to be all right. I got your back. It ain't nothing like having somebody touch you just to let you know that everything is going to be all right. They don't have to open their mouth. Jesus didn't say a word. He just reached out and touched him. And he and can can you imagine Reverend Bass, that what the what the man must have thought? You ain't supposed to be touching me. This thing uh, I can imagine what was going through his mind uh, that that wait a minute, hold up. I got leprosy, doc. All I want you to do is cleanse me. I, I, you can, uh, why are you touching me? I know he was, he was in awe that Jesus was comfortable enough to touch him. And the reason I say it was because, watch this, when he healed the 10 lepers, if you remember in Luke, I believe it's over in Luke, let me double check, Luke 17. When Jesus healed the 10 lepers, the Bible says, That 10 lepers came to Jesus, and this is what the Bible said. They stood afar off. And Jesus told them, go show yourself to the priest. And while they were going, they were healed. And the Bible says only one came back to thank Jesus. And he, of course, Jesus being Jesus, he said, didn't I heal 10? We're the other nine. <laughs> that, that's just how Jesus is. <laughs> He's like, didn't I, didn't I hook up ten? How come it just one coming back? But this is what gives me the notion that Jesus didn't have to touch this man in order to heal him because he spoke the word and they went heal him. But watch this. This man needed more than just a, a word. To, of his healing he needed somebody to show him some love he, he had been out of the city we don't know how long he hadn't been touched by a clean person in possibly weeks months or years and Jesus walks on the scene and touches him uh, and it brings him comfort uh, which nobody else could bring him Be, Jesus didn't care watch this what the rest of the people thought because imagine what the man, I already said, what the man probably thought he was crazy. Imagine the people that were with Jesus saying, I don't believe he just touched this leper. Now, and you know how we do. Now we thinking, now we following him, he the Messiah, but now I don't know if I'm going to touch him. <laughs> he done messed around and touched him. He might have it, so I'm going to put my hands in my pocket. <laughs> You see, touching for Jesus, touching this man wasn't politically correct. It wasn't proper and it wasn't even healthy. But he did it anyway. Tell your neighbor he did it anyway. Look at what 2 Peter 3 and 9 says. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Jesus' touch was likely the first touch the man had from a clean person, and we don't know how long. And I wonder what your reaction was 
when he touched you. Because when he touched you, you were living with sinful leprosy. You couldn't come into the heavenly gate for those of you who study Revelation with us. You wouldn't have made it into the heavenly city unless you were covered and touched and covered in his blood. And I wonder how you felt when he first touched you. Because we ought to relive that touch every day we wake up. We ought to relive and thank God that he touched me. I ought to thank God that all of a sudden uh, he, he, he decided to touch me uh, uh, all of a sudden out of nowhere he decided to reach down and touch my spirit uh, I don't know if Jesus touched him to cure him from his leprosy but I know that he cured him of his loneliness I know that he touched this man and this man felt felt an initial relationship with Jesus because he hadn't been touched by a clean person and we don't know how long sometime we got to understand that we got to touch those that we don't want to touch we got to touch the homeless man we got to touch those that are sick with HIV and AIDS we got to touch those that I don't care what nobody say COVID wasn't nothing but the enemy because it kept us from touching each other and we are a people that are living based on touch now watch this I laughed I went to the barber shop yesterday I know some of y'all saying why are you going to the barber shop but uh I, w- I went to my barber and I asked my barber I said how important is touch to you and he said it's the only thing for me Because he said, and he was talking about his wife. He said, my wife, we could be arguing fire and brimstone. But if she touched me on my shoulder, my part of the argument ends. Because I know her touch. Now, here's the thing. She could touch him in the right way. or She could touch him. In the wrong way. But he said to me, if she touches me on my shoulder the right way, my part of the argument is over. He said, that's just how important to him touch is. Now, we touch people in many ways, not just physically. You can pray for somebody and touch them. They don't even have to be in your sphere of reference. You can pray for somebody and God will touch them for you. Can I get a witness? But it just blows my mind that Jesus touched me one day. He touched me uh, and made me feel welcome in the body of Christ. I didn't always feel welcome when I first joined my church. But I thank God that Jesus always made me feel welcome. That's why I kept coming. Because sometimes some of the people had some scowls on their face. And some of the people told me I couldn't do this and I couldn't do that. But Jesus made me feel welcome in his house. And I thank God that he touched me. When I reflect on just uh, who I am and all my shortcomings when I reflect on the mess that I did uh, I thank God that Jesus touched me cause he didn't have to do it somebody shout glory in this place alright I'm on my way out I'm on my way out here we go here we go as we close this thing finally after he comforts you so, so you come to him you seek him he comforts you first he comforts you. I know you want your healing right away, but he got to fix some, some emotional things in you. Some of us got some emotional stuff that God got to fix in us before he heals us. Because if he does not heal the emotional side of who we are, we will go out and hurt somebody because we've been clean. Am I right about it? Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. He, 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 we sought him. He cleanses. He comforts us. In other words, he wants to heal some emotional things that this man had going on. He wants to heal some emotional things that you got going on before he sends you out into the world that you might not harm somebody else. Hear me in this place. It says after he comforts, he cleans. All right. Jesus didn't just talk about the person and their need. 
He talked to the person and to their need. Ah, he said, watch this, read the text. I'm willing. Look at what he says. The man asked me, wilt thou make me cleansed? He says, I'm willing. Look at what he says. That denotes his desire. And then he says, be clean. That denotes his messianic power because nobody could be cleansed of leprosy <sighs> unless God stepped in. Y'all with me? They, they, couldn't, they couldn't heal it unless God stepped in. That's why Jesus told the man later on to go show yourself to the priest. That was, that was, Reverend Vance, that was the end of his cleansing. See, see, he couldn't be considered cleansed until the priest said that he was good to go. In other words, they had to make sure that he was truly cleansed and healed of leprosy. In other words, and it truly would show Jesus' messianic power because he, he spoke over the man that would be clean and he, so he sent them to the priest. Bible says, and the man was clean from that point on. The touch brought comfort. His command brought cleansing. Be thou clean. Uh, the, the, the disease had to leave. Uh, it was not just a physical healing. It was a spiritual healing. Uh, Jesus sends him away and he goes to the, to the priest to make sure for confirmation. Jesus didn't just see a disease needing to be cured. Although that would have been good. It would have been good enough if he saw a disease and he healed them. He didn't just see an untouchable person. No, Jesus saw a person that looks a lot like you and me. A person created by God, made in his image. A person for whom God has plans for. A person whom God has gifted in certain areas to contribute to society and to the kingdom and, and a person with potential to do great things and influence a great number of people. That's what Jesus saw when he saw this man and that's what Jesus sees when he sees each and every one of us. He saw a person for whom he would die. Oh, y'all missed that. Jesus saw a person for whom he would die. When you look at the untouchables in the world today or in your sphere of influence, what do you see? Do you see a person that you would be willing to die for? Do you see or do you see the problems in their lives? That's the, what most people see. But you need to grasp the fact of what Jesus sees when he looks at each and every one of us. Because once he looks at us, he will touch your soul somebody shout glory in this place there's somebody this morning that he wants to touch he wants to comfort you and he wants to cleanse you he wants to touch you like in the in the days before there was no one and he scooped up and he touched some clay and he created Adam he wants to touch you as after he created Adam he touched Adam Adam and pulled out a rib and created Eve. He wants to touch you and transform you like he transformed Abram to Abraham. Oh, oh, I wish I had some help in this place. He wants to touch you like he changed Jacob from a trickster to Israel. Oh, I wish I had some help in this place. He wants to touch you as he changed Moses from a murderer to the prince of Egypt to the man who would, would run, who would deliver God's people. He touched and transformed a nobody like Jeremiah into a weeping prophet. He touched and transformed Simon into Peter, the rock of God. Upon that rock, God built his church. He touched a man named James and John, and they became the sons of thunder. Somebody shout glory in this place. And he touched a, a dirty, low-down brother like me one day, uh, and he picked me up uh, and turned me around. Uh, and
and he said you gonna be my preacher and he said you gonna be my pastor and he said you will lead God's people well he wants to touch some of you in here right now he wants you to stand on your feet and be what he's called you to be he wants to touch you that you lead the choir he wants to touch you that you pray the prayers of the righteous he wants to touch you that you sing the songs of zion somebody say lord touch me the comforting cleansing power of jesus you gotta seek him He'll comfort you in your seeking. Because sometimes on the road to getting to Jesus, the devil will act foolish in your life. But Jesus will come along. He'll touch you. Just keep coming, baby. I know he don't want you to come to church. I know he, he don't want you to, to come and he don't want you to wave your hand. He don't want you to clap your hands. But Jesus said, just keep coming, baby. I'm right here beside you and I got your back. Uh, but then he says, because if you, if you hang around long enough and you make your way down to the front of the church and you believe that I bled, suffered, and died on your behalf, Jesus said, I'll cleanse you. I'll wash you whiter than snow. Somebody shout glory in this place. But all you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe it in your heart. I don't know what you going through right now, but seek Jesus. Watch him comfort you and then let him cleanse you. All you got to do is believe. Shall we all stand? Come on, let's give God some praise. unto me all that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light if there's a man woman boy or girl and you don't know Jesus you haven't made the profession of your faith you haven't stepped out there to come know this man called Jesus he hasn't cleansed you yet we offer Christ to you you're watching on Facebook all you have to type in is I want to be saved I want to be saved and this is how you can be saved first you got to admit that you're a sinner must all have sinned and come short of the glory of God Romans Leave us 10 and 23. All you have to do is confess that and then believe in your heart. Not in the pastor's heart, not in the church's heart. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. He bled, suffered, and died on an old rugged cross and he rose on the third day with all power in his hands. His blood covers, cleanses us. And then you have to commit to serving Christ. Commit to serving Christ. It's easy as ABC. Admit, believe, and commit. If there's anybody here that wants to do that today, you can't worry about who's trying to keep you from seeking Jesus. Folk going to always be around looking. They're going to talk about you if you come. They're going to talk about you if you don't come. <laughs> So you might as well come before it's ever lasting too late. 
Because hell is real. And I don't care what they say about to you on TikTok, Facebook, uh, or all that stuff. Y'all better start reading your word. Because <laughs> folk on those social media mess you up. They mess you up. So if you're looking, if you're unsaved, I offer that plea. Then secondly, if you are looking for a church home, the Grace Baptist Church opens its doors to you. Um, you can come by letter from your church, your pastor. Uh, we want you to be in a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. I'm not in the habit of stealing nobody's members. I get real concerned because I don't want nobody taking somebody that God planted here. Because if God planted them here and you go someplace else, you are not in obedience what God called you to do. That's why before anybody leaves the church, you need to talk it over with God. So, if you are looking for a church home, we offer grace to you. And finally, if you're in a backslidden condition, a backslidden condition is where you serve the Lord, you saved. Not saying that you're not saved, you're saved. But you stop serving God. You stop showing up. And you stop giving God the glory. And all we want to do if you're in a backslidden condition is have prayer with you. I ain't ashamed to say it. I, I messed up when I first came to Christ a bunch of times. I was backsliding all over the place until God grabbed a hold of me. Amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about. See, we, see, we, we try to act like we don't, we don't make no mistakes here. We don't have no problems here. That, that's, that's not where this pulpit comes from. I had some problems. And I couldn't solve them without Jesus. And I ain't ashamed to say it because he's brought me out. But I know, I know, y'all been good all your lives. You, you're doing it the right way every day. But if those of you, if there's someone here that wants prayer so that you can get it right, we offer that as well. It's my final plea. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Let's give him a round of applause. No, that was, that was a clap for the preacher. Let's give a clap for God there. Amen. Let's give him let's give him the glory. Let's give him the honor. Let's give him the praise. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Look at what an uncle can do. <laughs> Amen. This young lady is going to have prayer with you right here. She's going to have prayer with you. We thank God for y'all can take her right over here, Minister Harris. Come on, let's give God some praise for what he did. Come on, come on, come on. It, it, it doesn't matter whether she's joining us or just need prayer. We are excited that she stepped out on faith and, and, and she wasn't afraid to seek Jesus. She didn't seek this pastor. She didn't seek a person. She's seeking the Lord. Amen. Let us look to the Lord as we prepare to be dismissed. Our Father and our God, we thank you, oh God, for your presence here today. We thank you for your move. We thank you for touching a heart. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we pray that you would be a hedge of protection around her, oh God. Strengthen her, Father God, where she's weak. Prop her up on every leaning side. Do the same for each and every individual in this place, oh God. Strengthen us as we go back out into a world to tell a dying world that Jesus saves to the utmost. That if you seek him, he will comfort and cleanse them. In the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, may your grace and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, abide in our hearts now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let the children of God shout amen. amen. Turn and touch somebody and then sanitize your hands. <laughs>